and Jeff Walker from the frozen north. It is Thursday, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, which means it's time for the EFG show. Jeff, how you doing? I'm doing good, Stephen. Another Thursday. Uh, Excited to do this. We we made it through. Right? Like Yes. I uh I, man, when it was Tuesday and we were recording the Engaged Family Gaming podcast here on twitch.tv slash engaged family gaming. I was like, there is no way I'm going to survive to the EFG show on Thursday. And guess what? I did it. We're here. <laughs> we got plenty of stuff to talk about. I'm vamping, obviously, while I do uh, some social sharing because it is time. To, it's time for that. Um, are you uh, are you watching WrestleMania next weekend? Uh, I am. I am. Because it's on Peacock now. It is on Peacock now. I'm. I'm a little nerd. I don't like this change with Peacock. Why? Wait, why? Well, okay, here's my thing. The one thing that the Dead Day Network had, maybe not for the average consumer, but I like to jump around between matches, or if a match is not good, you can't skip to whatever matches you want to watch now. Oh, you got to watch all of it because it's advertisements. Well, you have... Well, no, I... I'm a Comcast writer, so I get the full thing for five dollars anyway. Okay. Uh, no, it's so. Say I'm watching. Let me just pull out uh, WrestleMania. What's a WrestleMania 17? And I just want to watch The Rock versus Stone Cold Steve Austin, the main event. Okay. In the old WWE Network, you used to go and just click a down on a button. It you could go from match to match. And it would bring me right to that match. Now with Peacock, you're just going to have to fast forward and hope you hit the right spot. Oh. So All that right. is what I'm not liking about it. Um, also, you can sense Study Network was not originally ad-free, was originally ad-free, and now Peacock isn't. Even though I get the non-ad version, now all their shows just stop randomly to pretend to play an ad and it just goes right back into it. True, true. So, but I do like that I have a watch list and stuff. That's pretty cool. All right. So, uh, what's the match you're looking forward to? Right now, I'll be honest. I haven't watched enough to figure out which match. I'm not going to lie. I am really, for me... I am really excited about the uh, tag match between the New Day and um, AJ Styles and his big dude. Hello and welcome to the EFG show. People who are watching, although um, you know we are we're vamping a little bit while we uh, while I do some social sharing. Um, I'm I, I will I am a New Day fan. I am a New Day stan, a Mark, as uh, you would like to say, and so. Uh, but I'm also kind of interested in the Hurt Business versus uh, Drew McIntyre. I like, I like that angle. What's really funny about the Hurt Business is um, a few years back, I went on another podcast um, to do fantasy booking. And remember, oh man, what's his name? He's the dude that tripped running into the Royal Rumble. And Titus O'Neil. Titus O'Neil, you know he was doing that thing for a while, the Titus brand. Yes, Titus Worldwide. Titus Worldwide. I went on and fantasy booked Titus Worldwide as a heel organization, and I was just a few years early and with the wrong wrestlers because literally, and I'm not joking you, <laughs> this they are doing exactly what I said Titus Worldwide should have done. Um, and it's hilarious to me, at least, um, you know, like the only thing that's different is, um, cause Titus worldwide went and got Dana Brooke and that was like a big piece of their thing. And I was big on that. Um, and they, and the hurt business obviously does not have, you know, it's all dudes right now. So, um, but it's. So I am I am appreciating those shenanigans, just because why not, right? So, you know what I am excited about though. I know we're vamping about 
WWE right now, but that's also because there's not a lot of news this week. <laughs> there are not because it's because uh, everybody wanted to stay out of the way of uh, April Fool's Day. I am excited about the WWE Hall of Fame this year. Yo, Rob Van Dam. Yes, I actually pulled it up because I couldn't remember who was all inducted, but this year it's a pretty good. Well, first of all, they are going to have you know 2020s class, so we are going to get to see JBL. British Bulldog, Justin Thunder Liger, William Shatner, and Titus O'Neil. Uh, Titus O'Neil, who you just mentioned, he's going to be the Warrior, Warrior Award recipient. But then we're also getting Molly Holly, Eric Bischoff, Kane, the Great Collie, and Rob Van Dam. Like, those are all great names to go in. Yeah. I missed Kane. How did I miss Kane? Was, was he recent? a recent announcement? Yeah, he um, was announced, like, last week. All right, so that's why I missed it, because it's been busy. Well-deserved for Kane, the big red machine. That means he's probably done, right? Does that mean he's done? Actually, it doesn't yeah. mean you're done. It really doesn't mean you're done, let's be real. Because um, they can kind of do whatever they want. Um, anyway, so enough about that. Let's get right into the show, Jeff. So you wear many hats. Many, many, many hats. And uh, one of them, probably the biggest one, is a job you gave yourself. You cruise across the internet looking for release dates for family-friendly video games. And you uh, find the release dates. And every Sunday on the Engage Family Gaming Facebook page, you publish a list of the video game releases for that week. And then that gets turned into a blog post on the uh, Mothership website. Jeff, tell me, what video games are coming out this week? Yeah, so this week, from March 28th through April 3rd, we had starting on Sunday, March 28th, we had Gallic Wars Battle Simulator on Switch. On Monday, March 29th, we have The Game of Life 2 on Switch. You Tuesday, heard it here first, folks. A sequel to The Game of Life. Yes. The Game of Life 2. The sad thing is, I was kind of like, oh, this will be a great game just to play with a family. It's $30. That's many, many dollars. For The Game of Life, yes. That's uh, a lot. Tuesday, March 30th. But you can dress up your pegs. That was like one of their sure. features. I'm pretty sure this will be a game that will be on sale for $5 in a few months. Probably, yes. Uh, Tuesday, March 30th, we have After Pulse on Switch, Balloon Girl on Switch, Narita Boy on PS4, Xbox One, and Switch. Also, you can find that on Game Pass right now. Speaking of which, let's put a pause in that. I've played some Narita Boy. Um, I'm going to share more impressions next week on, um, you know, so we'll be able, you know, maybe, no, next week is board games. The next video game podcast, I'm going to uh, I'm gonna give more impressions on that. Uh, Narita Boy is really freaking good. Um, if you have Xbox Game Pass, you need to download that thing right now, especially if you like 2D uh, platformers. Oh, it is so good, Jeff. It is so, so good. Carry on. I like, we do have a comment that says, is the game of life too called Afterlife? No, it is not. Wish, <laughs> no, wish it Phil, was, though. No, it is not called Afterlife. Literally, it is the Game of Life 2. Sorry, yes. I was looking at a different window, and I didn't see the chat. That's my. That's supposed to be my job. Thanks for uh, covering for me, Jeff. Yes. Phil, no, it's not Afterlife. You know what? Let's be let's be super real. If they made a sequel to, to the Game of Life, and you could die, and it was like what your ghost did, that would actually be sick. And that I would, because cool. that's high concept. Right? Like, okay, so it's the Game of Life 2, like, what happens, like, after? I, I think Phil's, Phil has something there. Um, someone should make that board game, actually. Which, quick conversation here. I mean, the Switch is becoming a great place for digital board games. It really is. It Wingspan, really is. Evolution, Game of Life 2. I mean, I, people seem to really like the Monopoly and Uno on the mm -hmm. Switch, like... And Munchkin's supposed to be coming eventually. They, like, announced it, like, a year and well, a half ago. Well, that was an action role-playing game. Oh, or are you talking the about Munchkin the actual card has. game? I thought the card game was supposed to come, too. Maybe I read that wrong. I don't know. There's no way to know. It's impossible no, to tell. No. All right, what other games are coming out? 
Uh, also coming out on Tuesday, we had Tie the Tasmanian Tiger 2, Bush Rescue HD on Switch, and Undermine on PS4. Okay. On, on Wednesday, March 31st, we had a Hat in Time Seal the Deal on PS4 and Xbox One, and a Hat in Time Miyakuza Metro on PS4 and Xbox One. I think these are extra level DLCs. They weren't listed for Switch, but I don't see why they won't be coming to Switch, since the game is also on Switch. Yeah, I'm sure they are. Uh, Drive-By on Switch, Escape from Life, Inc. on Xbox One and Switch, Rainbow Corns on Switch, Squad Killer on Switch, Stormtail on Switch, and Tennis World 2 on Series X. Sure. Uh, Thursday, April 1st, so coming out today, we had A Long Way Down on Switch, Dungeons and Puzzles on Switch, Morhoon Cart 2 on Switch, Stick Fight the Game on Switch. Train that looks Stick- wild, by the way. Stick Fight the Game is... It's it's like a, it's a multiplayer like party fighting game where you play stick figures. And the stages are all kind of destructible, so you can really just kind of mess around, so... Anyway, carry on. Uh, also coming out on Thursday, we had Train Station Simulator 2 on Switch. What comes after on Switch? And then I did put a couple games for the grown-ups... Which, if you don't watch, are for the grown-ups are the rated M games that... Mm -hmm. We don't put every rated M game, but they are games that I think are kind of big releases. So if people are interested in knowing those. uh, On Monday, March 29th, we had Doom 3 VR Edition on PlayStation VR. Mm -hmm. And coming out today, Thursday, April 1st, we had Outriders on PS4, PS5, Xbox One, and Series X. And if you want to know more about that game, I would encourage you to go onto Twitch and just search it up, because they had an aggressive streamer campaign. And um, I'm not going to lie, man, uh, it's on Game Pass, and I'm yeah. downloading it tonight. Oh, it's it's already downloaded. I downloaded it straight from my app when I remembered it was on there. Well, aren't you... Yeah, smart. I probably, Um, I don't know if I'm going to play it before next week's show, if if people want to hear about it, because uh, I plan on trying it out with one of my friends, but right now we're busy going through a way out, as I mentioned last week. um, I'm going to try and put some time into it this weekend, just because I think it sounds like a game that I would be down with, so I'm going to give it a shot. This is one of those, you know, Borderlands, you know, big skill tree, um, you know, shooter RPGs. But and it's a third-person shooter, which I love because I hate first-person shooters. I'm horrible at them. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna have to see. Uh, we're gonna have to see. Um, but you know, we'll 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 circle back on that one. And yep. uh, is that it? Yep, that is it. There are no games coming out tomorrow. So, so um, here is the March Mad SNES update. Um, I don't have graphics prepared, however. If you go to twitter.com slash EFGaming, there are two polls up right now. And it is Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island versus Joe and Mac 2. Uh, Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island is rightfully destroying it. Uh, This is a number 2 versus a number 15 seed, so I can't really say uh, it would be that it's inappropriate. And next is is Wario's Woods versus ogre battle um and wario's woods is uh holding a relatively comfortable lead there's about 10 hours left so you got to do it tonight or early tomorrow morning to get it going uh mega mom saying rip earthworm jim yeah earthworm jim drew some un <laughs> some unfortunate because both earthworm jim and earthworm jim 2 out in the first round um this is what we found in the nes one is the the thing we found out last year is in the first round sometimes you could just have some really like you know Yoshi's Island versus Joe and Mac two kind of matchups that are just that are just chalk right where it's you know we almost had a weird upset with NHL right but like yeah. let's be real um, starting in the next round nothing is a sure thing anymore. Um, you know, so it's going to be much more interesting. So everybody, this is what I would encourage you to do. Pretty much. I run these things for 24 hours at a time. Um, so there is always a poll going. So set an alarm, set a reminder, pop over to the engaged family gaming, Twitter, a feed 
um, you know, once a day. And if you do it, uh, you will always have a poll or two to look at. And we're just going to keep this going. Uh, what I believe I'm going to do is for the second round, um, I'm going to do uh, three a day to uh, try and pick up the pace a little bit. So I have been doing two. I'm going to do three a day um, just to, you know, keep the engagement up. But things are going to get wild starting in the next round. So, again, those are the votes you're going to want to pick up. Yoshi's Island versus Joe and Mac or Wario's Woods versus Ogre Battle. Um, you especially want to, if you are a Joe and Mac 2 fan, uh, you better find yourself a Joe and Mac community somewhere on the internet. Maybe hit up the subreddit. I don't know what you got to do, but you're going to have to do some work um, because it is down by a lot. So um, so that's a quick March Mad SNES. The first round is just marching along. We, always, we remember from last time, the first round is always the most brutal. And in some cases, it's the least exciting, but it's one of those you got to do it. But we're almost to the round of 32 and it's going to get so wild. Um, so, Jeff. You got some Funko Pops to show us. I do, yes. We'll go over to Jeff's Collector's Corner with a K. With a K, because <laughs> why not? Um, because fun why fact, not? the Mortal Kombat movie got delayed by a week. Did you know that? It, it did. I saw that. I don't understand why. Did Do you think they had to go through and just brush up some special effects? No, I'm sure they were just looking at the schedule of things. Um, who knows? I'm sure they were just looking at the schedule of other releases and wanted to just get out of the way of something or give something some breathing room or something like that i mean i can't think of anything that's in the way now i mean the closest i guess i don't follow movies enough especially since not going to theaters but um i i'm sure that they have some kind of internal metrics it might be that they might want to let you know it could be as simple as they want to let um kong versus godzilla fade out a little bit I was actually thinking that I was wondering if they wanted to elongate because after that is that they don't really have any movie till Space Jam, so they maybe wanted to elongate how long an exclusive it, it movie could be was, that simple. I don't know. Was going to Space be Space Jam, July sixteenth. I'm going to tell you yeah. what. Um, I, I don't. I think I might go see it in the theater. <laughs> I'm going to be vaccinated. So my appointment is on Sunday. Happy Easter to me. I don't know. I might give him a phone call and see. I don't know, man. Because, like, so here's the thing, right? I was reading Polygon, and Polygon had an article. Um, and this is amazing reading, by the way. If you go to Polygon.com, their front page is a review of going to a movie theater. This is so wild. It's a review of a guy was vaccinated. He put on his N95 mask and he went to go see the Lord of the Rings. Um, Cause they were playing the Lord of the Rings trilogy in like ultra 4k in a theater. And he went and um, like just listening to that first off, listening to it made me tear up. Like just the idea of going to a theater again, like absolutely crushed me thinking about it. And then I was like, you know what? Um, the thing going in my favor here is I am the only person in my family who has any interest in this new Space Jam. So I would be <laughs> able to go by myself. I could sit, like, in a back corner away from everybody. You know, like, I would, pro you know, it would be different than if we had, like, the whole family there for, like, Raya or something. That would be a little different. Or, you know, the Black Widow movie, which would be, you know, an army of people. Um, so I feel like maybe by July I'll be vaccinated and it'll probably be, you know, I can go early in the morning or something. I don't know. It's just, there's something about Space Jam. I don't know. Also, can I say, like, wouldn't it be hilarious? Like, it's almost worth the funny. Because, like, if my first movie back, the first movie I saw back after the, the once in a century, knock on wood... Uh, pandemic was Space Jam, <laughs> not not a Marvel movie, not a re-release of a Star Wars movie. No, 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 Space Jam. I don't know. Um, we'll decide. Uh, we'll decide then. But yeah, at least I'm getting my first shot on Sunday. I'm very excited. Never in my life have I, have I been so stoked to get stabbed. <laughs> um, so I completely forgot where we were at. Oh, so it's Collector's Corner with a K. Collectors with a K. Arbitrarily. 
Uh, so, I got the next set of Pokemon Funko Pops in. Uh, weirdly, I've always ordered them from Amazon, and Amazon sent me this one, which I did order out, uh, but it's the Metallic Pikachu. Look at that. Look He's at that. He's definitely metallic. He is definitely metallic. Um, and I don't know if it's because he's metallic. It's feel he feels cheaper than the others. Maybe because I'm expecting him to be have a little half sense. He's metallic. I think that's probably it. I think that's probably it. But so he showed up, and then Amazon was like, "Oh, your other three were delayed. Uh, two of them are going to come in the middle of." end of april and one we don't even have a date on i'm like this has never happened before so i canceled them and ordered them straight from best buy and got them in like two days not cool. best buy GameStop. yeah so, show me what you got buddy so also got the ponyta ami amiibo um funko pop awesome so and then i then came raichu okay raichu's pretty cute yeah, so you can get the whole Pikachu line now. I mean, there's tons of Pikachus, different Pikachus. You, they're all up above me. But now you can get Pichu, Pikachu, and Raichu. They need an Alolan Raichu. That's what they need now. I think that's inevitable. And it needs to come smelling like pancakes, because that's what Alolan Raichu smells like. Smells like what? Pancakes. Sure. I don't even know what that smells like, so I don't know, but sure. Great. You don't know what pancakes smell like? I don't like? have a sense of smell, actually. So, oh. So I can't smell. I, I don't know what they oh. smell like. Um, but I, I never... So as a result, like, I never read or, like, the... Like, when when they say, like, what Pokemon smell like or when they describe the smell of things, like, I just gloss over it because I just don't know. And so oh, that's an interesting so, fact. Um, I actually knew someone else who had... So... That was not a way to tell if you ever had COVID was if you were lost your sense of smell. Correct. Because you... <laughs> every, every, um, you are not the first person to tell me that. They were like, oh, wow. Do you just always think you have COVID? And I'm like, no, nope, I don't. <laughs> I'm, it's just I can't use that. Um, well, all right. So I'm any sorry, other? You... Yes, one more. But I'm just going to say you're really missing out because pancakes smell delicious. I'm sure they do. Oh, I'm sure they do. They look delicious. <laughs> and they taste delicious, so. Like, I mean, it doesn't mess up your taste, right? Your I mean, it does, is... but, I mean, I wouldn't know. I mean, they still taste okay. delicious, so. Well, that's cool. Okay. Besides the Back fact to that we know Steven can't smell. Most um, of the people that are listening in the chat absolutely know. Like, Mega Mom knows. She and, I, she and I have had these discussions before while LARPing. So, carry on. What's the next one? Because I have a Funko Pop I want to show off, too. Okay, yes. So, this might be my favorite one they've come out with so far, and it's Mew. Oh, he's, like, flying. Yeah, he's on a little pedestal. Yeah, you know what? Oh, that reminds me. There's a Funko Pop pre-order that's in some random... Oh, man, I'm never going to be able to find it again. That I was going to pre-order the Vision. Uh, but it's the white and blue Vision. Oh, from, that's cool. Um, and he's on one of the... Like, he's flying. So he's doing, like, one of these... You know, um, like you guys can see it. He's like floating, doing one of these things, like one hand out and one hand up. Um, and it's white with the blue gem in the top. And he's on one of the like the clear thing that makes it look like he's floating. And I was like, oh, that is so cool. And uh, I didn't finish the order. And now it's a pre-order on some random website that I've never heard about. Yeah, Phil um, uh, saying uh, flying figures are automatically better. I don't disagree with you my man um but specifically i had to chill out with the vision and with the wandavision pops because they put out like 15 of them but i've decided that the ones that i need are the vision in his halloween costume and then the flying white vision like i think those are the two like looking at wandavision as a whole like i don't need a wanda pop but I definitely need, and I don't need uh, Agatha Harkness. Um, I don't need a, a pop of her, but I think I need Vision in his Halloween costume and Vision flying. So now I got to show you guys my Funko Pop. Jeff, I showed him this, and some of my Facebook friends will probably have seen it. But let me tell you, this is my new favorite Funko Pop of all time. This right here is a Funko Pop of a Chicken McNugget dressed up like a cowboy. Now, is this gaming related? No, it's not. 
But <laughs> this is, <coughs> once again, I repeat, a chicken McNugget dressed up like a cowboy. Now, if you are of a certain age, you will remember that there were a bunch of chicken McNuggets that all were like, you know, it's exactly, it's old man related. There were a bunch of chicken McNuggets like, that had like different outfits, right? Yeah, and, and came, they came out around Halloween. I, um, I remember yes. specifically the vampire. Yeah. Oh man, they were t- and they were great. And you and... got a little Halloween bucket too. Yeah. So, what happened is, my oldest and I were at Walgreens to get a flat of water or something, right? And I always go by their collectibles area because sometimes they have the wildest stuff. And one and they have Funko Pops. And one of the things they had was a Ronald McDonald with a guitar. And I was like, oh, man, I wonder if they're going to have the McNuggets, like as a joke. And I said to my son, listen, if there's a if there is a chicken McNugget Funko Pop, I am buying it. And he's like, Dad, that's cringe. You can't. And so, you know, as soon as he said it was cringe, I had to. And so we I looked under, I kneeled down, I moved the uh, Ronald McDonald and behind it, lo and behold, Chicken McNugget dressed like a cowboy. And I was like, nope, this is this was a sign from above that I needed to bring it home. And he he has a place of honor on my uh um yeah, it's worth it's worth looking at. Here's the thing. What if you use Walgreens as your pharmacy? Walgreens is try they try to carry collectible toys. So they always and they go through like a rotating stock and they have Walgreens exclusive Funko Pops. Um, for example, there was a Moon Knight that was Walgreens exclusive. And, um, you know, so, yeah, exactly. They always have random stuff. So, for me, I will always walk through there. Because even if I, like, this is the first collectible that I bought there in, like, a year and a half. But, like, it was amazing. And, you know, they always have, like, they... You know, Kate, I'm sure Mega Mom has seen this. They have really cool Transformers. Um, you know, so wrestling figures, stuff like that. So uh, that's a little tip for uh, collectibles. I mean, Again, not game related, but Any whatever. of these, like, chain stores are starting. Like, I like going through even Walmart or Target. If you just go, it's usually right next to the video games. Yeah. I mean, they okay, always... Walmart and Target are, you're right. But the thing about Walgreens is that they're not is that they're not they are often not picked over. Yeah, like these right here. Yep. Got all the, the whole set of these from a Walmart because they were for they were on cl- final clearance for $5 each. Yeah, I mean, listen, you had to do that. So, yeah, Walgreens Walgreens I mean, Walgreens is like my little haven. Um and you know what? I discovered them because we needed, you know, for well, because I, I, there was a time where we needed like a chase toy from one of our kids and it was Walgreens that had it. So anyway, moving on to the news. Um, right now, if you have, if you own a PlayStation four or a PlayStation five for that matter, uh, ratchet and clank is free as part of their stay at home program. So I would encourage everybody to download this game Start the download, cancel it if you don't have room on your PlayStation, whatever. The ori- yeah, it's the ratchet- really annoying how they make you do that. I need to go through all of them and do that, but I'm it like, is I, what don't it have, is, man. Um, I don't have time to cancel all these downloads right now, so I only did one and realized what they were going to make me do. Yep, it's, it is what it is. However, because um, they're not PlayStation Plus, but these are, you don't need PlayStation Plus or anything like that. They're just, it's a free game. Uh, the Ratchet and Clank is the PS de Resistance, although Mega Mom, I think you might be interested in The Witness, because uh, I know you like some puzzle games. Um, so you should definitely keep your eye out on The Witness, especially since it costs literally zero dollars. But the cool thing about Ratchet and Clank is um, they actually are adding a, a 60 frame per second mode that is going to be for PlayStation 5. So if you own it, you own it on both systems. Uh, so when you eventually get a PlayStation 5, um, which, you know, most folks will, you know, at some point in the future, um, you'll get an improved version of that, which is pretty cool. They also did a free update for Miles Morales this week that included some bug fixes and some performance optimizations for PlayStation 5, but also a new suit, the Advanced Technology Suit, which is 
just shy of Iron Spider. Like it looks like it's kind of yeah. It really is a really cool looking suit. Um, I'll have to put it in. I I saw yep. there was an update, but I didn't actually open the game. Yeah, definitely do that. So, um, in other news. Uh, Genshin Impact is coming to PlayStation 5. Did you know Genshin Impact makes like $3 million a day? Worldwide? I still have not played Genshin Impact. Genshin Impact, otherwise known as Legend of Zelda Breath of the Waifu, is <laughs> um, it's on mobile. I mean, mobile is what pushes a lot of it, but it's on mobile and it is on all the consoles. And they announced a PlayStation 5 version that includes 4K resolutions, Faster loading times, which is my personal favorite about it, and um, it just looks it just looks really pretty. This is it's 100%. free to play, right? It's free to play. It's a gotcha game, so you're gonna you know they're gonna be trying to convince you to spend money, but you don't really have to. Um, but you know, basically, they keep releasing new characters because the idea is that you can build a team of four characters and run around an adventure in the world, and everybody has elemental affinities and things like that. And um, so whenever a new character comes out, and they release new characters, you know, every couple of weeks, um, every time a new character comes out, their they, their earnings go up because people go in and start trying to, um, you know, win the new characters. We got Phil in the chat it's, saying, it's surprisingly good. He thought he would hate it. Um, you are not the first person I have heard say that, Phil. Specific, like, uh, tons of people I have heard be like, man, this is not my thing. And the truth of the matter is, it is in fact absolutely their thing. <laughs> um, my uh, you know friend of the Engaged Family Gaming podcast, uh, Rob Collagian, who used to run Pawn's Perspective, he um, swore off games with microtransactions. He was never going to play one again. And then this game came out, and he was like, "Wow, this is really good." So now his whole family plays. So, um, so that's Genshin Impact's coming to PS Five. I'm gonna download it. And mess around with it a little bit. I don't. I will never be able to play a lot of it because, you know. But it's an action RPG. Yeah, absolutely. So, Jeff. Last week, you did not watch this. I know because you're a responsible adult, and um, <laughs> but I watched it. It is a. It was a Xbox and Twitch partnered to do a four hour long. Twitch gaming cross ID at Xbox showcase. They showed off 60 video games. Of those 60 video games, all of which couldn't be classified as indie, uh, 20 of them are coming to Xbox Game Pass day one. That's insane, Jeff. What do you think? That That is, I mean... More games of Game Pass. That's that's that sounds great. Yeah, absolutely. Um, just some of the highlights. Um, they showed off Moon Glow Bay, which I think is going to be like one of the wholesome, one of the most wholesome games of the year. Uh, it is a fishing RPG set in uh, Eastern Canada, and it has uh, voxel art, and you are you're, you're a fisher person, and it is your goal is to catch them all really but you're fishing a hundred different species and apparently you know there's some secrets going on but nothing really crazy this is meant to be a very chill game um so yeah 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 mega mom and this is also like this is definitely not exclusive to xbox i, I, would expect I this felt to come everywhere. that mega mom was gonna really like that i just, i don't know you personally but i do know you love your fishing games um yeah well, listen, I mean, we're, you know, she is an EFG super fan. We have come to like her, we, we have come to understand her taste. Um, some other games. Yeah, so they did announce. I'll make the, the pilgrimage to Connecticut and I will meet all of you great people in person. Uh, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's bound to happen eventually. Um, you got to show up for one of our sprint weekends and we will, um, you know, we'll figure that out. So, um, they, I mean, they showed off the new, uh, Among Us map. It's in an airship. My kids have already played a bunch on it. They say they like it. Here's what's really interesting. Um, so you're in an airship and so it has a cockpit, right? Um, yeah. the profanity filter <laughs> blocks it when you try and say cockpit. That's Which, great. I understand why, right? Like I understand why. 
but they're so frustrated because they're like, no, I'm not saying because for them, like when they so wait, so when they're trying to type it or say it out loud. No, when you tr- when you try and type cockpit, it blocks out the first four letters, <laughs> and um, admit, and I totally understand why, and I appreciate it, but like my middle son is just like, dad, I. You know, he gets like upset when he when you know he accidentally types something that hits the filter, and he doesn't very often. And I've seen it happen because I'll sit and watch him play, and because their profanity filter hits all sorts of stuff, and including some typos of some of those words as well. They're pretty smart, and so he's like, "Dad, they blocked me from saying cockpit," and I'm not talking about anything bad. I'm talking about the front of the plane. <laughs> So anyway, um, another so another one uh, that was uh, there were two more that were announced that are like the big features for us. One of them is called Nobody Saves the World from Drinkbox Studios. You'll know that name as the people that made Guacamelee. It is an Great action game. role playing game, and you start as nobody who is basically just like a little kid. Um, and doesn't have any specific powers. And eventually, you gain more forms that you get to transform into. Things like a rat, a horse, um, a, you know, like a, a ninja, and things like that. And each of those have different traversal powers, but also combat powers. And you use those to fight your way through, you know, I, I would say like Secret of Mana style dungeons. That sounds which, fun. Which looks great. I am very excited about that. And that's from Guacamele. You know, they have a funny sense of humor. You know, drink box. They are wild. They, they, so it's going to be wild. I'm really excited. And it's neat to see them do something other than a Metroidvania. Right? Um, and lastly, how about Astria Ascending from Artisan Studios? Um, let me read this. And tell me if this does not say Steve all over it. <clears throat> Turn-based JRPG Astria Ascending from Artisan Studios and publisher Dear Villagers is coming to Xbox Series X and S, One, and Game Pass in 2021. In a world where chaos looms, players take control of the Demigods, a motley crew of eight heroes charged with the fate of the world. Um, each character has their own story, explored across five cities, 25 dungeons, and 30 hours of gameplay, up to 50 for 100% completion. Along with the finely tuned turn-based combat, players can try out a range of side quests and minigames, including an original fantasy-themed token game. Um, fun fact, this game is also being uh, worked on by some of the same people that helped make Final Fantasy X. That sounds cool, and yes, that sounds like a Steve game over. Sounds like a Steve and Jeff game all over. Yeah, I mean, exactly. We will be uh, messing around with that game. So, um, overall, 60 games total, 20 of which are coming to uh, Xbox Game Pass. Another one that I am really actually excited for is a game called Art of Rally, which is one that I encourage everybody to look up uh, on YouTube. It is a cell-shaded racing game. A rally game, obviously. Um, and the art style looks very awesome, and it's meant to be like an arcade racer. I am very excited for that game. Very, very, very excited for that game. Um, and then, you know, like I said, there are... They announced... They talked about 60 video games, um, and just so many. But those were just some of the highlights. Um, I'm excited about... I'm definitely excited about Moonglow Bay. Nobody's man. These games. Moonglow Bay is one of those games that I think is I'm either going to like kind of bounce off of it because it's too chill, or I'm going to lose my life to it for two weeks. <laughs> I don't know which. Um, but I do know that Mega Mom will play it because <laughs> it's a fishing RPG. We know that's her jam. Um, that truthfully, Jeff, that is the bulk of the news this week. Yeah, we did miss up. We will also, before we go, though, we have to talk about PlayStation Plus and Xbox games. Oh, goodness. With How did gold. I miss that? Jeff, what's coming to Xbox? Well, first off, let's just get the games with gold real quick. I, I was going to do it backwards, but yeah, we can do games with gold. Let's because... just get those out of the way. All right, so Xbox games with gold. And let's be honest, they just need to get rid of this program. It's never good news. Like, it is... 
from my well, perspective. Well, I mean, uh, not too long ago, they did have Little Nightmare, so they've had... It's not like all games are bad. They're just... Well, you'll see once we get a PlayStation Plus. Uh, yeah. So coming out, the Xbox One games... Coming out from April 1st to April 30th, we're going to have Vikings Wolves of Midgard. Yep. Uh, and from April 16th to May 15th, we're going to have Truck Racing Championship, which yep. I guess has an ESR, uh, ERP of $60. Really? Okay. Remember, <laughs> remember, you know, there's a lot of games that are 60 bucks, so... Yes, and then the Xbox 360 games, which you think eventually they just get rid of the 360 games. Um, we're going to have Dark Void from mm -hmm. April 1st to April 15th, and from April 16th to April 30th, they're going to have Hardcore Uprising. So apparently, Hardcore Uprising is is supposed to be okay. I heard some people, I heard some rumblings on Twitter that that is quietly a very good game. One thing that we do have to remember with the reason why they still throw the 360 games on there is that if you own an Xbox Series X, you can play those 360 games. Yeah. They're, so they're just older games. Um, but, you know, so that there's that piece. I'm not saying it makes it better. But, but there is that. That's why they're including them still. But I agree. It is never good news. Because they put these announcements out and nobody is ever impressed. So they're spending money to make these games happen, right? Like, they put the money and the effort in to releasing them um, and to paying the developers and things like that. This doesn't happen for nothing. And then they put it out, and it's not a positive beat. So, and sure, people download and they play the games. I'm sure they do. I'm sure they have the numbers. But, you know, it seems... I wonder if they've done some other testing to see if maybe there is, you know, some other, um, you know, maybe there, maybe there is some other metric where, you know, people on the internet are being annoying about it, but maybe there's a ton of hours being played into these games. Yeah, possibly. I'll be honest. I, most of the time with my games with gold, forget to go claim them. I haven't claimed them in a while, I, but you know, what are you going to do? So what about PlayStation Plus? Because the PlayStation yes. Plus games are a bit different this year. Yes, this they better. they were a little more exciting. So coming out PlayStation Plus first for the PlayStation Five, and if you don't have a PlayStation Five, you can still claim this on your PlayStation account on their website. Uh, they're gonna you're gonna be getting Odd World Soul Storm. Okay. So that's great, and that game is just coming out the day it's released on PlayStation Plus. And then um, for PlayStation 4, we are getting um, Days Gone, which, I mean, it's only a year old, so that's pretty good, right? It is. Did that come out last so. year? Okay, it just... Yeah. But if you have PlayStation 5, you're already getting this game with the PlayStation Plus collection. True, but you might not be. You might you not might already not have... Be. Yep, I'm... I'm just saying that if you have PlayStation Five, you can you already have this. So if you forget to get this one, and then also will be Zombie Army Four Dead War. Sure, I, I mean, and that was I guess that was re, it says this was released last year too. So it's so two fairly new games, and this is kind of a conversation I wanted to bring up. I think PlayStation is really starting to use PlayStation Plus to combat. I mean, it's not as good, but, you know, to go against Game Pass. <laughs> They're not the same thing. They're not the same uh, thing, no. But ever since the PlayStation 5 came out, they've really worked on getting good quality games. So, they have. And in that, I think they are making the effort to make PlayStation Plus really attractive, whereas Xbox is made, putting the effort in to make Game Pass more attractive. I think that's probably the same. But I don't think either company is trying to position them to compete with each other. And it ultimately comes down to they're a different kind of experience. Um, so, with that said, Sony is using PlayStation... You know, Sony uses PlayStation Plus um, as, like... A opportunity for you know to to 
incentivize people to very quickly get games for their console so that they're comfortable spending that money on a $500 piece of equipment, right? Because I remember with my parents, like, why are we buying you this? What are you going to play on it, right, if you can't play your old stuff? And so PlayStation yeah. immediately comes out, and they're like, well, you know, here's what you can get. Um, and Xbox is doing the same thing, but for Xbox, they really want that subscription. I think that's the priority, whereas for me, it feels like the priority with um, – you know, with, is is really trying to sell PlayStations. I, I I I'm not comfortable saying that they're competing with each other yet, but I think down the road they might. I mean, they're both the premier subscription service, so for each platform. So you're probably. And I I think what's making it really exciting though is that ever since the PlayStation Five has come out, they have been giving away. Well, not giving away. You're paying for them, but those PlayStation Five games, you know, with day and day release dates. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so far for PlayStation 5, we've gotten Bug Snacks. Uh, they gave Man Eater. That wasn't like a new game, but then, not counting Man Eater, then you've got Maquette and Soul Storm. It makes yep. me think, oh, what's going to be the next game? Yeah, what's next? Going... No, I agree. Because I, I look at things and I'm like, well, okay, every two months they're getting a new one. Uh, so what's coming in June? I look at it and go, well, August, Kena's coming out. Is that the game? And then you know, makes you start thinking and looking at those release lists. Um, yeah, no, I, I would really not be surprised if Kana went to, um, PlayStation plus. I really would not. Yeah. I think it makes, I don't, I think, that... I don't think June's game is going to be ratchet and clank. They'll get way too much money just selling that oh, one. No, no, yeah. They need to sell ratchet and clank, but from my perspective, though, I really feel like Ratchet and Clank will probably be Game Pass eventually. Yeah, I mean, these games, like I said, we got Days Gone, that April, last week, or last month, we got Final Fantasy VII. They're t- the, it's becoming a shorter time from when games are released to when PlayStation Plus is giving them out now. Agreed. Agreed. And, you know, for... Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, you're, you are correct on that. Um, you know, they are, they're pulling the trigger faster. Um, which is, I mean, I, I, I love to see it, right? Like, for example, you know, Ratchet and Clank, like you really got to make a decision now because it is going to be, you know, like that's going to be on, um, PlayStation Plus, Sooner rather than later. Yeah, so it's like, but someone like me, that's going to be still be a day one purchase for me. Yeah, I agree. I agree. But I do think, you know, their families are going to have to make that call. Like, do we wait? You know, how important is that game? And I think especially with first party PlayStation games, you got to make that call. You know? Yeah. So, um, we did it. All right. So now we didn't forget. I almost forgot. We did it. We did it. So, um, Jeff, thank you for uh, hanging out with me tonight. Everybody in the chat, thank you so much for hanging out with Jeff and I. I will be back next week. we got a full slate next week. Monday will be World of Warcraft uh, with myself and Dana. And me. What? And me. No, I'm playing World of Warcraft with you. No. What? Not yet. Um, Uh Uh-huh. So, uh, no, me and Dana will be playing World of Warcraft on Monday night. Tuesday, we're going to be recording a board game episode of the Engaged Family Gaming Podcast. I may or may not be talking a whole bunch about the new Magic the Gathering set, which will be uh, interesting. And uh, then we'll be back next week for the EFG show. As always, let's see if next week is more of a... uh, (laughs) We'll see if next week is, um, you know, if there's more news. And we will absolutely have another big time uh, March Mad SNES update because next time we will be down to the round of 32. So, everybody, thank you for joining us tonight. We will see you next week. And uh, until then, don't forget to get your family game on. We'll see you guys soon. Bye. Bye.